Things First is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. That's Nick Wright. Danny Cannell is with us this morning. Good morning, Back Danny. Back on brand, Danny. There we oh, go. That's, that's right. right. Turtleneck brand. Hey, it's a cold, rainy day out. The turtleneck just like snuggly. Oh, you know, you just like want to just cozy up with it and just Keep relax. Keep cashing them checks. It is, uh, <laughs> Keep cashing them checks. It is a rainy and miserable day in New York, so oh, get it's cozy. a great day. It's a great Stay day. in. Call out sick and watch us for three hours. Big show for you on this Tuesday morning, and we have to start with history made on Monday Night Football. Drew Brees and the Saints hosting the Colts, and what a game for Brees. Third quarter, he finds his tight end, Josh Hill, for a touchdown. Not just any touchdown, the record-breaking one, which moves him past Peyton Manning for most passing touchdowns all time at 540. He got love from his teammates, from his family, from the fans there in New Orleans. Breeze finished the night an incredible 29 of 30. That is a 96.7 completion percentage, best mark ever in a single game. And a win to top it all off for the Saints. Here's Drew Breeze after the game. Listen, it was, it was special. Everything about the night, you know. Um, I don't know how they pick, <laughs> I don't know how they pick them, <laughs> right? Monday Night Football, playing the Colts, right? The team that, you know, we, we won the Super Bowl against 10 years ago. So the, the whole, whole uh, Super Bowl 44 team is back for the 10th anniversary. And, and obviously national television, um, you know, big game. And um, now, you know, that record in the balance as well. And just um, just kind of makes you shake your head, you know. Just, are you kidding me? You know, I'm not sure how we got here. <laughs> um, it just, you know, kind of makes your whole life and career flash before your eyes. Colts were like, anything we can do to help you. No problem, <laughs> yes. Drew Brees. Did you see Alex, his exposed neck? It was just uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> like he's running, I don't know what that t-shirt was. Oh. He would have looked but much better on. in a turtleneck. Had see? my blazer. He well, that's, good. Right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's uh, right. All right, Nick, let's, let's talk about Drew Brees, and then we'll get to where the Saints are right now. Where does Brees rank right now all time among quarterbacks? Well, it's such an interesting question because we talked about this a little over a year ago when Breeze passed, I think it was Peyton Manning, maybe two years ago actually, on the passing yards list. And you can, statistically, he has the profile of one of the two or three greatest quarterbacks ever. He's, he's got more touchdowns than anybody now, more yards than anybody, more completions than anybody. So the three things quarterbacks can do, complete passes, complete passes for yards, and then complete passes for touchdowns, he's done more of that than any quarterback ever. He and, and Brady might catch him in touchdowns. It'll depend on who plays longer. But he, Brady, Peyton Manning, and Favre are basically the top of the mountain statistically across almost all statistical categories. But Breeze isn't in that class quite. And even with another Super Bowl, I don't think he'd be in that class because there's one thing that the other modern day all-time greats have, which is a period of time where we all thought, oh, that's the best quarterback in football. And Breeze, despite his brilliance, and his story is unbelievable, this is a guy who won comeback player of the year, not coming back from injury, coming back from being bad. He got benched in 2003 for Doug Flutie, and in 04 he wins the NFL comeback player of the year award. He then in 06 has to go to a new team, because in the first four or five years of his career, he only had one outstanding season. And starting in 06 to now, that's when he's gone on this unbelievable run. But if you're talking about modern era quarterbacks, there's obviously Brady right here. Yep. But then that next tier to me, Peyton Manning, Joe Montana, John Elway, not only do all those guys have multiple Super Bowls, but all those guys at one period of, of their career were the clear cut best quarterback in the league. That next tier, I think, is where Breeze is, along with Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, Dan Marino. But even those guys all have one thing Breeze doesn't, a league MVP, multiple first-team All-Pros. So it's really difficult to slot him. It's almost 
to cross sports a Ricky Henderson situation. You know where you're talking yep. about, or even maybe Hank Aaron's a better example. I don't think anyone talks about Hank as the greatest baseball player ever, but you look at the numbers and you're like, why is he not in the discussion? Because he was probably never the best player playing at that time. So I'm not trying to take anything away from Drew, but that's, to me, he's on that third tier of modern greats, which is nothing against him. It's had a big Ben. It's had a, our friend Troy Aikman. It's ahead of some other guys, but it's not with Peyton Manning. It's not with Joe Montana. It's certainly not with Tom Brady. So I had him at top five all time, but I, and I do think it's modern era quarterbacks because we are living in a new age. And I even think if you went back and pinpointed it to 2004, 2005, when you saw the pass interference rule change, which really was the Peyton Manning rule, like the NFL yeah. competition committee, which Bill Polian was a part of and you know had say, hey, he had four interceptions, the AFC championship game, they changed the rule. All of a sudden, that's when you really saw an explosion yep. in the passing stats in the NFL. Um, so you really almost have to look at everybody a little bit differently because these numbers, as insane as they are, these are all going to be broken down the road because more, Patrick Mahomes, like in sure. longevity does become a, uh, come into play here. But I also feel like you love LeBron, and the one thing LeBron doesn't have to catch MJ is the rings. So I want to make sure we don't do that with Drew Brees because he only has one ring, like we're going to hold that against him. And I think that's an easy um, thing to fall victim to is that all of a sudden you say, well, he's never been that. And the fact that while he was playing, Peyton Manning was ringing up five MVPs. Well, neither one of us would make the case for him over Peyton Manning, but he's sure got to be right there with him. But, so we'll, but let me ask you that, because let's just say the Saints win the Super Bowl this year. Right, then okay, he'd match them, Just too. give it to him. Yep. He's obviously not Brady, right? No. He's still obviously not Peyton Manning, even though they'd have the same number of Super Bowls. He beat Peyton in a Super Bowl, and he has all the records. I still think eye test-wise, when those two guys were playing, they played in the same era, Peyton was better, right? Yes. Joe Montana, to me. I have him over. It, John Elway, who went to five, one, two, and his numbers are a guy who's an example. The numbers aren't there. Right. So there's four modern era guys already. But see, I don't have Elway ahead of Drew Brees because I look at the way some of these guys played. That's why I have a, I have an irrational reverence for Dan Marino. Sure. Because I, and I grew up down there. I was friendly with him. Got to, you know, get, got to know him. So I might be a little bit too loyal to Dan Marino. But if you look at the lack of weapons that he had, didn't have a run game, and they really relied heavily on the pass. Like if John Elway didn't get Terrell Davis at the end of his career, he doesn't get those Super Bowls, and we might not talk about him the same okay, way. So you know but, what I mean? But if you have Marino up there, but that would mean Breeze, because top five, the thing about top fives is there's only five people. <laughs> right. So Breeze I had him at five. Breeze I had is Marino. ahead. Ahead of Brett Favre, yes. ahead of Aaron Rodgers, ahead of obviously Steve Young and Troy Aikman. Yes. All, okay, so you've got him ahead of Elway. So you go Brady, Manning, Montana, Montana, Manning, either way. Marino, I have and Brady, Drew, Montana, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, Drew Brees. Yeah, and I think for all these discussions, we're almost better off doing tiers. Tiers, you're right. Because like I have him in the tier with Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, and Dan Marino. Because it's because then we end up arguing four versus seven versus six. Right. So if it's about the eye test, or if it's about who's MVP, or if it's about who's the best quarterback oh, at any one time, there How it is. That? Do, should well, numbers like not matter? Why are we even keeping stats? No, then no, no, it's no. not about it because if statistically he's right there. Well, so, the, the, but so it's all of it, right? So it's in for these discussions, it's it's partial winning, mm -hmm. it's partial partial stats and it's partial eye test. Drew Brees has done enough winning to get in the conversation. Absolutely. He hasn't done so much winning that it ends the conversation like with Brady, but he's done enough to get in the door. If you don't have any winning, then you have to, the eye test and the stats have to be so overwhelming like Marino, you force your way in, right? Yep. It, with Elway, he did a nut, so much winning that it kind of overcomes the eye test part, or not the eye test, the stats part. Right. So he went to five Super Bowls. So it's, it's kind of a, a uh, what's, what's the word? A combination is sure. what I'll use of all of it. His stats are an A triple plus. The eye test for me is very, very good, but he's just hurt by the fact that he came in right after Favre, who won three MVPs. Mm -hmm. He played during Rodgers, who's won multiple MVPs. Br Br Brady, who's won three MVPs. Peyton Manning, who's won five. So even things like all pro teams, he's only been the first team all pro quarterback once in his career, which is maybe it's the era is working against him. If he had come in in the mid 80s, would it be different? I don't know. But that to me is always going to hurt him on this all time rankings. I think too, the record that impresses me most, and this is a title he can have in his own right, the most accurate 
thrower of the football of all time. And that's backed up statistically, you know, with the completion percentage, he's going to go down with the highest career completion percentage, the single season completion percentage, and now the game completion percentage. That to me is a title that's worthy of its own category. And he's got that bar none. I'm telling you, Nick, uh, Jenna, I played, you know, seven years in the NFL and watched a lot of practices where you're just playing seven on seven with no defense on the field. And you had quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks, who couldn't complete 29 out of 30 passes with no defense. The fact that he did this, real live tackling taking place and guys running routes, it is absurd to be able to do this on that stage. Against a team whose playoff life was on the line in Indy. Who needed he, the win. Who needed yeah. the win. The yeah. Saints needed the win. And he knew he had this record hanging over his head that if he doesn't get it, Tom Brady could be the one getting the ceremony a week from now in that context. One of the things Drew Brees has, his story is is one of the most unique in NFL history. Favre's story is very unique as well. But to be a second round pick, to have your first team say, ah, we like you, but we're going to go with Phillip Rivers. To have the Miami Dolphins pass on you because of an injury. To be benched in your first slate for Doug Flutie briefly. And then to go on this run. No one could have anticipated this coming when he teamed up with the New Orleans Saints and Sean Payton in 2006. And to be here right now is truly remarkable. All right, not to be lost in all this, the Saints did actually win last night. They are good, but are they the best in the NFC? We will discuss that on the 